Hello YouTube, this is Frugal, and I did a video once before showing how to set up the SciTech panels in Prepared if you already have FSX installed. Today, I'm going to show you how to get the SciTech panels working in FSX Steam Edition and Prepared if you don't have FSX Classic installed. Now, every time I do a SciTech panels video, uh, people far more intelligent than I am post in the comments, you spad, you spad. There is an alternate set of third-party drivers for the SciTech panels available called SPAD, the SciTech something something advanced drivers. I am not covering those, I'm covering Cytec's own software for those of you who don't want to mess around with clicking a lot of buttons and doing a lot of configuration. So the first thing you need to do, now this is a Windows 7 partition on my machine, many of you know I'm using Windows 8 as well. This is Windows 7, I've been having some problems with, with Windows 8. On this machine I have FSX Steam Edition and I have Prepared 2.4. I've downloaded the drivers here, so I'm going to run these drivers up. And it says, do you want to run this file from Madcats? Yes, I do. So I'm going to run that. It's already got a temp file on here because I previously had the software on. I un uninstalled it to do this video. So yes, overwrite everything. Install the software. Accept the disclaimer. And it's done. Notice it doesn't do anything else dramatic. It's, it's easy to think at this point that nothing has worked. If you go into your file manager, your file explorer, sorry, use a Mac quite a lot. Go into your explorer. Go into program files find SciTech down there, you will find a directory called ProFlight Panels. Now in there, these applications here are testers. So depending on which, which panels you have installed, you can run each of these and just verify that everything's working. So there's the multi-panel and I can move gear, flaps down, flaps up, I can trim, I can turn the auto throttle on and off and that all works great. Next up, the radio panel. So once again, I can turn the knobs here, change the modes as to what I'm tuning, redial stuff, Great, that's working. And finally, I have that one, which is the switch panel. So I can check gear up, gear down. I can toggle the switches. I can start the magne the engines, turn the magnetos on and off. Everything is great there. So once you've verified all of that's working, here's the first challenge many of you will have. This is the program that needs to run when you're running FSX or prepared. If you run that on its own, and you can, this happens. The application has failed to start because its side-by-side -side configuration is incorrect. That's not a big deal. Side-by-side -side configuration is a .NET thing. Um, it, if you're a .NET programmer, you're well aware of this. You add a manifest, which you can see there, SciPanels XE manifest. You add a manifest to your program, which specifies this is the version of .NET that I'm using. This is the version of the application that I am. We don't need to worry about that. We only ever have one version of SciPanels that XE on our machines. So all you need to do is click on that, click on it again slowly, not a fast double click, but a slow one, and just rename it. Stick an old on the end of it. And you will find now, if you run the panels, you don't get a crash. In fact, nothing happens. What that means is it started up and shut down. It didn't see the sim running, so it just gave up. So the next thing we need to do now is actually make this run on its own when we run FSX Steam Edition or when we run Prepared. It's very easy to do. First, click up here. You see that as soon as you click up here in Explorer, it gives you the full path to this directory. So we're going to copy that with Control C. Okay. Next up, click off that. Click on the arrow here. Choose your name and look for an app data folder. If you don't see an app data folder, it means you're not showing hidden files. So to get around that, hit your start button and type in hidden, and you'll see there show hidden files and folders. If you click on that, up pops this control panel. Just make sure that this one, hidden files and folders, show hidden files and folders is turned on. If it is, you will see app data. Now go into app data, go into roaming, find Microsoft, FSX Steam Edition is distributed by Dovetail, but it's still Microsoft FSX. If you only have FSX Steam Edition on your machine, in the Microsoft roaming app data directory, you will find just an FSX directory. If you have FSX Steam Edition and Classic, you will have an FSX SE directory. Go into the one appropriate to you. So FSX SE if you have both installed, FSX if you only have one. Open that up. You will find in there a file called exe, .xml. Right click it. Now I have edited these things before so I can click on edit. If you've not edited a file before, you'll need to click on open and you'll get a dialog come up asking you to choose which program to use to edit it. So just go through that in the normal way. Because I've edited this before, it's going to bring up notepad for me. And here we are. And you'll notice that I've added in a line down here. That line. I'm going to delete that and show you how to add it yourself. All you need to do, now Dovetail were a little bit lazy, and they gave a template for how to add add-ons here. 
add-on is called add-on application my path add-on to xe we'll take that lazy dovetail and we'll paste this down the bottom here they could have put comments in here which is why i'm saying they're lazy we'll rename this so the name here is Cytec, whoops, not capitalized, Cytec panels, disabled, no, not disabled, whoops, so we remove the true, and we put in here false, it wants the path now, now the path is the one that you copied, which I've now got rid of, because I copied that uh, other thing over, so let me just go back into program files here, we find it once again, there it is, there it is, click on this and copy that right so path we overwrite that with the directory name that we copied and on the end of it put in backslash s a i panels with an s on the end dot e x e once you're done click control s for save that writes the file now having done that copy this entire section so highlight it with your mouse control c to copy it or you can obviously go edit copy having copied it Go back to Explorer and let's find prepared. If you don't have prepared installed, you can skip this step, obviously. But let's find prepared, go into app data, go into roaming, now find Lockheed Martin, prepared version two. And once again, there's exe.xml. Right click, edit, and oops, I thought I deleted that. Obviously I hadn't. I will pretend it's deleted and we'll drop this back in like so. So all we're doing here is we're adding another program to start up. XE.XML is a config file used by Prepared and FSX that when you start the sim, it runs through every entry in here that is not disabled. So disabled is false, and it starts these programs. You can actually use this to start a whole bunch of stuff. So if you like to start Active Sky Next, for example, when you go flying, you can drop that in here as well. Anything you like, to be honest. If you want to start your virtual airlines A cars, you can drop that in here as well. But for now, Launch the add-on, name is Cytec Panels, disabled false path, the path to the ProFlight Panels directory that got installed, and then sidepanels.exe, nothing in the command line, and then the end of that section. Okay, having done that, save the file, and you are now good to go. All that remains is to start your sim, and when you start your sim, you should see your panels flicker into life. Now, a very common question I also get is, why do the panels not work in certain aircraft, notably PMDG? Um, many aircraft, many complex aircraft, add custom programming, which goes around what the F what FSX will prepared normally do in terms of their control inputs, and as a result, you will find that on many complex aircraft, certain functions of your panels don't work. For example, the multi-panel, which lets me control the autopilot and stuff like that, does not work in PMDG 737. Similarly, the switch panel does not work in PMDG 737, only the gear lever does. You can get around that by using the SPAD drivers that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. That, however, is probably worth its own video at a later point. I hope this was helpful. As always, my name is Frugal, and until next time, I'll see you soon.